We're going book shopping, and not only are we going book shopping, but we are going to go and get a fantasy today. I never read fantasy, and I left a little poll up on Instagram to see what I should get. So make sure you're following me on Instagram, but also make sure you're subscribed because there's new videos every single day for the entire month of October for Booktober, and I hope you guys enjoy. We're going bookstore shopping today. I don't care. I don't care. I know I literally do not even need to go bookstore shopping because I have a ton of books that like literally have not been read yet, but I just want a new thriller like you know the feeling you know what I don't even need to explain it to you guys because you guys are already happy that we're going to the bookstore so like you know what we're just gonna go but I cannot wait to go and see what this bookstore has I'm actually gonna go to this independent bookstore I've been wanting to go to for the absolute longest like literally it's been I can't even tell you how long it's been that I've been like wanting to go to this bookstore and I've been there before but there's like a new owner so they closed and now they're like opening again and they've like been reopened for I think like a month but I literally have not gone. So today is the day. I'm gonna go but I want to see if they have like thrillers and like what kind of things they have there. I want to meet the owner. Like the bookstore gives the best vibe. It always has and I love the old owner so I'm sure I'll love the new owner too. They also sell books online um, so if you guys like the vibe in there like go definitely check out like what's online because I feel like bookstore owners of independent bookstores just pick out the best books like just they just make the bookstore experience so much more like immersive than just like Barnes because I feel like Barnes gets their recs from us like people who read books like that's where they get their recs or like bestsellers who maybe sold like good books last year or the year before they'll like sell their next book that came out but independent bookstore owners they like really really dig for like the good stuff so I'm gonna go but I do want to show you guys a little um thing that I got in the mail that's very bookish. So I haven't decorated my Kindle because I've been waiting on these little stickers that I think are so cute. They're Magnolia Parks themed, obviously. They're from the turning page, either on Instagram or London's High Society on TikTok, you guys can see there. But I love all of these. They are very bookish, obviously. This says, he laughs, and for some reason, it sounds like I'm ringing the doorbell of the home I grew up in, which is obviously a quote from um, Magnolia Parks. I'm gonna see if that'll even focus. There we go. I think that's just like the cutest quote ever and I love it. Also, a lot of these have um, more Magnolia Parks like quotes and I wanted to put this on my Kindle and so I literally wanted to have my Kindle have a bunch of Magnolia Park stickers. So I think this will be fun to put on there and I will link these below if you guys wanna pick these up for yourself. You got a smile that makes the sun rise. You
was the cutest bookstore, I swear. I can't like stay out here and talk too long because the music it like might pick up, but I have a huge thing of books, which I'm gonna show you guys in a second. Um, but I just had to say, freaking independent bookstores are literally the best. They're so much better than like any other bookstore. And I, I think it's because one, I literally met someone in there who's like so excited about books and she was talking about how she's writing her own book. She was super nice. She gave me a recommendation and I ended up getting a fantasy book, my first ever fantasy. So I'm gonna be like reading it in one of these videos. But then also the bookstore owner, it was like so cool seeing like her passion for like why she wanted to own her own bookstore. It just was so sweet. These are all the books that I ended up getting. I got um, some books that are like in my regular genre, but then like I said, I did end up picking up a fantasy and it was one you guys recommended. So um, I'm gonna show you guys whenever we go back home. Home and I'm gonna give you guys a little haul. I ended up getting one fantasy book, but I'm actually gonna get one more. So comment below a um, fantasy book that you guys think I should read because I literally have read nothing. I left a little um, question box on Instagram. I think the only fantasy I've really read is like Twilight. I don't even like consider that like real fantasy. I feel like I consider that more like, um, romance and anything I mean it was like fantasy because obviously like vampires and like stuff but I just like I feel like I read it because it was popular at the time but like I've literally never read like like fantasy and so um I need all of your recs please leave them below I left a question box on Instagram um for like friendships to leave a ton of recommendations to like help me out and so many of you guys left recommendations make sure you're following me there um because i you get to like see things in real time but we have a huge haul do i need to get this no i definitely did not need to buy these things but actually one of the books i for sure knew i was going in to get which was part of the reason i went there because i was like i could go to barnes or i could drive 40 minutes and like go to this independent bookstore in my town we actually do not have an independent bookstore that sells new books we have two independent bookstores, but they both sell like old books, or not old, but like used books. And a lot of the books are like not new used books. Like one of them is literally like called like Prairie Archives because it shows like archive books, um, like very old, like collectors type things. So yeah, I love driving to this bookstore. Um, the owner I met, the new owner, she's so, so nice. Um, she also is a big, I think, fantasy reader because there was a huge fantasy selection. There's also a really big thriller selection, which was awesome. So make sure you're checking out the website because she actually, um, she recently did like something for the second, um, what's it called? The second fourth wing book that's coming out, Iron and Flame, is that right? She had something on her stories that was like, if you want to order like a surprise book, like and you don't like figure out what it is like until the book is like order you can order it but it's like a new book and so a bunch of people ordered it i saw it and i was like oh like i don't really know like what her style of books is yet you know what i mean like sometimes people share like older stuff and like so it's like i'm not gonna order it and literally she announced that like everyone who ordered the surprise book is like getting iron and flame or something like that so i'm like what that is crazy so she does such a great job of getting like new books she has a bunch of books by cassandra claire sarah day mass like uh, i mean so many books and i even she was recommending books to me that i hadn't even heard of and like i follow a lot of booktubers who share everything like fantasy romance like all kinds of stuff and she was sharing books I literally had never heard of before, which is why I love independent bookstores because I feel like I find books that I have not heard of before. Um, so let's get into it. The first book that I got, I actually have heard of before. It's called Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. Now I have not read The Bodyguard. I literally need to read it. It is on my TBR. I haven't read it, but I feel like this author's writing is writing that I'll like. I'm always looking for books with no spice because I do read books with spice, but sometimes I need like a break, you know, like if I read something crazy, like if I read Credence, I'm going to need a break probably after that book. Um, and I don't think that Catherine Center has like spice in her books or if she does, it's like very minimal. On the back it says, love isn't blind, it's just a little blurry. Sadie Montgr Montgomery never saw what was coming, literally. <laughs> One minute she's celebrating the biggest achievement in her life, 
Placing as a finalist in the North American Portrait Society competition, the next she's lying in a hospital bed diagnosed with a probably temporary condition known as face blindness. She can see, but every face she looks at is now a jumbled puzzle of disconnected features. Imagine trying to read a book upside down and in another language. This is Sadie's new reality with every face she sees. But as she struggles to cope, hang on to her artistic dream, work through family major family issues and take care of her beloved dog, Peanut, she falls in love, lust, <laughs> a temporary obsession to distract from the real problems in her life with not one but two very different men. The timing couldn't be worse. If only her life were a little more in focus, Sadie might be able to find her way, but perceiving anything clearly right now seems impossible, even though there are things we can only find when we aren't looking, and there are people who show up when we least expect them. And there are always, always other ways of seeing. So, excited to read that. I feel like it'll be a good book. Then I actually found a book I had never heard of before, and I think it only has like 500 reviews on Goodreads, um, and this I think is a queer read. It's called In the the case of heartbreak and it only has like 500 reviews but like the reviews are pretty good it says uh gorgeous evergreen forests are part of the tourist allure in picturesque fern falls but this summer ben parish is pining harder than any of them ben has been baking his mother's cinnamon rolls at the family cafe for years he's been quietly in love with adam reed his musician slash mechanic neighbor for just as long, but Ben's done waiting behind the pastry case. Despite his fear of failure, he's entered a make or break competition to build his recipes into a national brand. He's going to take charge of his business instead of nearly taking the cafe again. And he's going to finally confess his feelings for Adam on live TV. Except his big plans get punched down before they even half rise. Soon Ben is dashing down the coast to his grandmother's, his grandma's 80th birthday party on the beach, hiding his broken heart in Maywell Bay, California. Sun, sea, and fresh breezes should blow in something new, except they don't. They blow in Adam Reed, grinning like a pirate and stealing the show as the musical entertainment hired by Grandma for her big bash. Grandma's signature heartbreak tea is the only remedy, and Grandma's tea could take the paint off a fence. But there's a burn of truth along with the booze in his bottle, and Ben has a decision to make. Can he take the sweetness in front of him and brave the bitterness that comes after, or is a little sea salt just what this cinnamon roll needs? Salty cinnamon rolls? Ew, Ben would never. This looks so cute and I've never heard of this book and that's why I freaking love independent bookstores. Like, you are not gonna find a book like this in Barnes. Like literally there was a section that said indie authors, literally a sign, it said indie authors and there were tons of books just on a table by indie authors that apparently she's either read or like looked up. And I feel like going to independent bookstores is such a great way to find like new reads because like, I don't know, it's just like, from a different perspective. Like you're not just looking on TikTok, you're not just looking on Bookstagram or Booktube. You're like actually able to like feel and hold and like look at the words and the pages and stuff before you buy it. It's just really nice. The next book that I got, which is a thriller, is The New Neighbor by Carter Wilson. And I also didn't see a ton of reviews on Goodreads for this one either. I think they were less than a thousand. Um, this one said, Aiden holds the winning Powerball numbers. Is today the best day of his life or the worst? Aiden Marlowe is a superstitious type. He's been playing the same lottery numbers for 15 years, never hitting the jackpot until now on the day of his wife's funeral. Aiden struggles to cope with these two sudden extremes, instant wealth beyond his imagination and the loss of the only woman he's ever loved, the mother of his twin children. But the money gives him and his kids options they didn't have before. They can leave everything behind, they can start a new life in a new town, so they do. But a huge new house and all the money in the world can't replace what they've lost and it's not before Aiden realizes he's merely trading old demons for new ones because someone is watching him and his family very closely. Someone who knows exactly who they are, where they've come from and what they're trying to hide. Someone who will stop at nothing to get what they want. <gasps> Woo, that looks good. And also the words are super, super spaced out. I don't know if that like matters to anybody, but like, I don't know if you can tell, but they're, I just love when words are not like squished together. I'm like a word person. I also got, I'm gonna show you guys a thriller. Shatter me because one of you guys, this is the comment that did me over. So a bunch of people on Instagram said like, get shatter me, get Akatar, get 
um fourth wing and you guys know i love dialogue and someone literally was like get fourth wing if you love dialogue so i'm thinking about maybe making that be my second book but i've also thought about making powerless be my second book but i cannot see the pages and that's the problem like i don't know what the words look like so someone said get shatter me because they said they never read uh fantasy and they read the first book and finished like the entire series in a week and so i was like you know what you've hooked me. So I picked up the book and before I actually even like really, really thought about it, I saw a girl who was shopping in the bookstore. She was so nice. She was like, I might write my own book one day. Like we got in this good conversation and she was saying how uh, she loves fantasy. And I was like, oh, well, I'm actually looking for a fantasy book. Again, another thing about independent bookstores, you can like find so many people who actually want to like talk about books. I feel like at Barnes, people are kind of like wanting to go in and out and it's so big. You can't really like be next to someone for too long or if you're in an aisle with someone like someone might walk out of the aisle you know what I mean it's just like not as I don't know it's not it's not as cozy so anyway I was like you like um fantasy like what do you think that I should get and she literally goes well shatter me is a good book and I'm like you know what that's it you did it for me like those the comments the stuff on Instagram little messages and her saying that made me get this book and I opened up the book and the words are so easy to read. And I think it's because it's a YA, like the words are spaced out. I feel like with fantasy, I get so nervous that like there's gonna be a ton of like world building and jargon and it's just gonna be like boring. And like, it's gonna take a while to get into because I hate starting new books. And I feel like that's the worst part of a book. And I've never DNF'd a book. So I just don't want to like start something that I'm gonna hate. Um, but on the back it says the moon understands what it means to be human, uncertain, alone, cat cra wow, cratered by imperfections. No one knows why Juliet's touch is fatal, but the reestablishment has plans for her, plans to use her as a weapon. But Juliet has plans of her own. After a lifetime without freedom, she's finally discovering a strength to fight back for the first time and to find a future with the one boy she thought she lost forever. In the electri electrifying first book in the Shatter Me series, uh, to Harry Moffey? Is that the author's name? Pre presents a riveting dystopian world, a thrilling superhero story, and an unforgettable heroine. I figured this would be like a good stepping stone because I don't really want to read anything with like magic. I don't want to read anything that's like too out there, but stuff that's like dystopian, I feel like I would enjoy because I like action movies like Hunger Games, like the movie, you know, that was good. Twilight was good, like the action, like, you know, I just, I like things like that. Um, I'm trying to think there was another show like Black Mirror like things that are kind of like make you think that are like a little wonky and weird I feel like those are fine, but like anything that's like spooky scary um, Any magic like I just didn't like I don't really have an interest um, So this I feel like is perfect for me, but I'm still in the hunt for a second book So let me know your recommendations and then I also got wildfire by Hannah Grace I read icebreaker and I probably was the only person on the planet that wasn't a huge fan of that book and I think it's because one, there was so much spice and two, I feel like it was way longer than it needed to be. But this book is actually a lot shorter. This book is less than 400 pages, whereas Icebreaker, I think is a little bit more than 400 pages, like maybe 480 or 460. And that extra 60 pages or 80 pages does something to me. Makes me just like wanna throw the book. And this is set in a camp setting, which I think sounds really cute. It says, it only takes one spark. At a party celebrating the end of the academic year, Maple Hill students Russ Calligan and Aurora Roberts have a passionate one night stand. Never one to overstay her welcome or expect much from a man, Aurora slips away before Russ even has a chance to ask her for her full name. Days later, they run into each other in their new homes as summer camp counselors, hoping to escape their complicated home lives. Russ knows breaking the camp's strict no staff fraternizing fraternizing rule will have him heading back to Maple Hills before the summer is over. But unfortunately for him, Aurora has never been very good at caring about the rules. This just sounds freaking cute. And this was actually the book that I went in for because I knew she had it. And I was like, I'd rather buy this from a like independent bookstore versus a big box store. So these are all the books that I got. I'm really excited for um, just like reading a new genre again. Uh, you guys told me that I need to read fantasy and I don't think Shatter Me is a romance, but maybe I think the second fantasy book that I should add in is like romanticy because I like romance. So 
Let me know, is fourth wing worth it? Is Akatar actually worth it even though it's thick as heck? Should I read that or should I read Powerless? Cause that also has like romance in it. Like someone who owns the book, please let me know. Like, is it actually an easy read? Like someone who does not like a lot of dialogue or well, let me take that back. Loves dialogue, does not like a lot of description and also doesn't like a lot of world building and like boring -y stuff. Like I could skip all that. And I just want to see people talking like that's it. I just want to see people communicating. I don't really even want to hear your thoughts that much. Like I just want to see you guys talking back and forth. That's it. So uh, yeah, a fantasy uh, video will be coming soon and I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one. Bye guys.